Hi, and welcome to Comedy Recapped. Today we're examining My Chauffeur, a 1986 American comedy film. Beware, spoilers ahead. Our movie starts off with a picturesque garden scene at exotic fountains with birds chirping away. A Rolls Royce eases in through the driveway and pulls up in front of the mansion. The scene cuts to the mansion's interior, where the chauffeur, dressed in a suit, comes down the staircase and is initially somewhat hard to distinguish from the actual homeowner. That is, of course, until he approaches his master at the fireplace and says, You sent for me, sir? His boss sends him on an errand to deliver a letter labeled Casey Meadows. This errand is a rather important task, and the chauffeur is made to promise to be as discreet with the operation as possible. The letter's final destination is an upscale restaurant, where it is networked from waiters to waitresses to chefs to cleaners, until it reaches its final recipient, Casey Meadows, who works in the restaurant as a dishwasher. The letter, we get to realize, is actually a hand-delivered job offer for the position of a driver from the owner of Brentwood Limousine Services, Mr. Witherspoon. She arrives just in time to meet her soon-to-be colleagues, an abundance of exclusively older men, in a meeting. The company's manager, who is also seen to be the head at the meeting, McBride, is visibly irritated by the ruckus this young, brash girl so effortlessly constitutes, and is in for more shock as she reveals she has actually been hired by the boss himself. He is initially hesitant about accepting a woman into the establishment, but eventually has to let her in, because he had no choice. He, however, firmly impresses that any slip-up from her end would lead to her losing her job without any reconsideration. Her colleagues are appalled by her employment into the establishment. Some speculate that she may have slept her way to it, and they cast bets as to how long she'd last on duty. Meanwhile, the only accepting co-worker she finds is Jeremy O'Brien, an older Irish driver, and unknown to Casey, he was the one who had delivered her letter. <laughs> Jeremy convinces her to tough it out and give the men time to adjust to her presence. He is able to convince her by catering to her love of vehicles, flaunting the Rolls Royce his boss had given him and promising she'd get hers in due time if she was committed to her newfound job. Casey routinely finds herself receiving the most tedious and difficult of assignments. By request, Jeremy orchestrates a meeting between Casey and Mr. Witherspoon. Mr. Witherspoon introduces himself as Mr. Rosewood. In an effort to keep his identity hidden, Mr. Witherspoon seems to have a keen interest in the young, upbeat driver. Casey's next client is a stuck-up businessman. We see him bossing his workers around with outrageous demands and deadlines. Right before Casey picks this client and his girlfriend up, we see them get into a very heated argument that persists throughout the drive to their destination. The girlfriend maintains that she wants a breakup, also revealing that she is pregnant from another man, who she was now in love with and planned on getting married to. She leaves him devastated in the limousine. In a bid to console him, Casey offers him a drink. It is his first drink in a while, and Casey observes the first switch in his normal stuck-up character, as he incessantly starts screaming and yelling, I'M FREE! Leaving Casey no other option than to take him to her apartment, to spend the night under her care and supervision. He wakes up, back to his normal self, and is utterly displeased with Casey. Unknown to Casey, this difficult client is named Battle Witherspoon, the son of Mr. Witherspoon. Fate brings Battle and Casey back together as Mr. Witherspoon orders Battle to check out another of his companies, upstate in Sonoma. It was the closest Mr. Witherspoon could convince his workaholic son to partake in an actual vacation. Mr. Witherspoon is also convinced that his son's breakup was due to his over-dedication to his work and tries to convince him to loosen up a little. Casey is assigned to drive Battle up north, much to their mutual displeasure. Halfway through the three-hour trip, the car overheats and breaks down in a remote location on the highway. They set out on foot in search of a phone to call for help. In a turn of events that Casey finds most hilarious, Battle falls into a muddy ditch which he has difficulties getting out of. She also mocks him for not wanting to ask a woman for help. Battle has no choice but to eventually plead for help. It starts to rain and Casey hurts her foot. Battle has to carry her for the rest of their journey. At long last, they reach a small house with a couple who offer to accommodate them for the night. Casey and Battle share a cozy room and begin to talk to each other. 
which eventually leads to kissing and Battle asks Casey to marry him. Casey, however, declines, as she finds it too spontaneous. Casey is next assigned to transport a Middle Eastern sheik to a meeting. The sheik is approached by a con artist and invited out for a wild night in the town. After Casey returns, she is fired by McBride after learning that police and government agents have been searching for the missing sheik. Battle Witherspoon was head over heels in love with Casey. This he reveals to his father, saying he wanted to marry one of his drivers, who was a woman. Mr. Witherspoon, in panic, immediately realizes it's Casey! Battle is able to win Casey over by proving to her that she can get her job back by inviting her to meet his father, who is the company CEO. Upon meeting him, Casey is confused because she had met this old man before and knew him as Mr. Rosewood. Mr. Witherspoon reveals that he had sent the letter from the beginning and had been keeping a close eye on her. He asks her if the apartment they're in is familiar to her. After giving it a thought, she recalls it was the apartment she grew up in as a child. Her mother used to work here as a maid. More excitingly, she recalls that she and Battle knew each other from way back as childhood friends. She agrees to marry him on the spot. Mr. Witherspoon objects to this and reveals that they are actually siblings. Jeremy O'Brien, his chauffeur, however, shows up with Giles, another limo driver, ordering Giles to confess what he knows about Casey's paternity. He reveals that Witherspoon is not Casey's biological father. Giles is. Giles was in a relationship with Casey's mother before she and Witherspoon spent their little weekend together. Giles, who was especially hostile to Casey, reveals that he denied paternity so that Casey would receive stable financial support as an heiress to the Witherspoon fortune. The movie ends with Casey and Battle getting married. They get into a Brentwood limousine, and their driver is the company manager McBride himself. My Chauffeur is the story of how Battle falls in love with Casey because of her sheepish, carefree, and witty behavior, as well as a sense of deja vu that helps him find happiness by connecting with his inner child. It also depicts Casey's struggle as a woman in the 80s, as she tries relentlessly to get the acceptance she rightfully deserves in a chauvinistic, misogynistic, and male-dominated system. And that's all for My Chauffeur. Hopefully you enjoyed this recap as much as we did. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. If you would like to look into other movies with us, be sure to like and click the subscribe button so you never miss a single video. Thanks for watching.